Welcome to the Firehouse Quick Chat. Today we're going to talk to Kevin Landgraf, Director of Sales for Door Engineering. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing today? Hey, very good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I, I, think, we, uh, I think we enjoy talking about the fourfold doors. I know we, gosh, we go back quite a ways here. Um, back when we had at another magazine um, and we had the Station Style Conference, you, you were there with, with your doors and, and at Firehouse. So, you know, that, that's great. You've been around for quite a while. Yeah, the the publications, especially Firehouse Magazine, have been a good uh, uh, good avenue for us to both learn about the industry and and share our our product. So good, Kevin. Tell us a little bit about door engineering. You know, how did they get into making fire station doors? So we've been around since actually about 1967. Uh, founded in in Watertown, Minnesota. We were just a small family owned company. Um, primarily, we were doing a lot of aviation hangar doors um, and then fourfold doors as well, but they were used a lot on like agricultural facilities, grain loadout facilities, and parking garages just because they're real uh, kind of industrial and, and uh, durable door system. And then uh, it, we, did, we did a few fire stations in the Midwest um, in the 70s and 80s. Minneapolis Fire Department was using the doors. Um, and in, into the 90s, but uh, really it took off in, in kind of 2000 um, when uh, the fire rescue industry really started to recognize it as a really a superior door system for, for emergency response. So. Right. Huh. Tell me about the doors themselves. What, what are they made out of? So they're, uh, they're are they made? <laughs> yeah, they're so well where they're made, they're made in they're made in Mankato, Minnesota. We just moved into a new plant about a year and a half ago as we've been expanding, so that's exciting. Um, and uh, they're they're steel construction, so it's welded structural steel tube uh, and then wrapped with with flat sheeting, uh, can be painted any color the customer desires. Um, a lot of fire departments like the uh, like different shades of red um, but depending on the region and the community that it's in we see a lot of a lot of different uh, different colors um, and then yeah the doors uh, they can be constructed uh, really with with that uh, steel construction we can vary the thickness and the um, and the structure of the door to meet different wind loads and uh, seismic requirements critical critical environments um, so stuff like that do they come in varying heights or are they all the same height? Yeah, so uh, in the fire industry, most common is uh, on a fire station is 14 by 14. Um, we see a lot of like 18 foot by 18 foot doors on, on uh, airport rescue stations because of the bigger, bigger apparatus, larger equipment. Um, and then uh, up to, we've done doors up to 30 foot wide or 30 foot tall, uh, not, at, not very common in a fire station, but and then uh, actually up to 35 foot wide and where we've seen some opportunities for wider doors like that is uh, we've had some existing stations that uh, uh, have had uh, turning radius issues coming into the station. Uh, so they, they knocked out the center column. We furnished a 30 foot wide door um, so that they could they can make it into the station all right. Wow. wow. And did the doors fold, they can fold in or out, right? Yeah, right. So the uh, primarily, originally, the, a lot of stations they fold into the station. Um, but a while back, we we developed what we call our XT door. It's patented, um, and that system uh, it was kind of designed for warmer climates. The doors fold out of the station, so you save save space inside. Um, great for retrofitting existing stations, um, but uh, um, also with. Uh, with new new facilities as well, I've used the exterior door um, again to save 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 floor space inside. Um, we've even uh, we've even furnished them in, in Alaska and, and colder climates, which was kind of interesting. Like I said, it was it was really designed for kind of with warmer climates in mind. The first ones we did were in Southern California, but uh, in colder climates, uh, what they've actually done is they heated the exterior apron so they would avoid cold up. So but they just, they appreciated that design so much and it worked so well with the, with their layout of their facilities. So. Right, right. The fourfold doors are certainly increasing in popularity, particularly when 
from when, you know, way back when we, we first uh, touched base. Um, in fact, in our station design awards this, this year, um, 29 out of 69 of the fire stations had four full doors. And that's, that's quite, a, quite an increase, I think. Besides the speed of opening, what are some of the other benefits of the four full doors? So yeah, the like you mentioned, the speed they open in in uh, up to 16 foot wide can open in in under seven seconds. Um, the energy efficiency, so the doors are all one inch insulated glass, low E. Uh, nice thing with with the low E coatings um, is the doors can have a lot of glass, but you're uh, you protect the equipment and turnout gear inside from UV um, UV rays and. And then the maintenance, the durability, just that they're, they're designed to last the life of the station. Uh, actually, at, at, I believe it was at one of the station design uh, conferences, I had a chief approach me and, and he was, uh, he'd had our doors on his station for, I think, probably over a decade. And he joked that uh, he, uh, he had never had a spring break on our door. And so I said, well, I don't expect he ever will. <laughs> so, because they don't have springs, so. Um, well, I remember having lunch with one chief um, in a big suburban area out here, and he made the comment, he was literally bragging about his doors on uh, one of the stations he put them in. He said, and if the station doesn't last, then we certainly will have the doors to put on the next station. So <laughs> um, I've heard you mention the aviation's impact on the fire, fire station doors. Um, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so one of the uh, one of the interesting things with like a an ARF station, ARFF, Airport Rescue and, and Firefighting uh, Station, uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, does put out some guidelines. They're not law, but some guidelines on designing stations for airports. And uh, uh, again, the size is important. Usually, eighteen foot by eighteen foot is the recommended size. Um, the desire is to have those doors open in under 16 seconds, uh, as well as be easy to manually operate by one person. Um, and then lastly, overhead space. These our uh, apparatus have a lot of um, uh, equipment on top of the trucks. And so they require a minimum of seven mm -hmm. feet of, of space above the trucks uh, for doing maintenance. And so if you're working on the truck in, inside the apparatus bay, obviously, Having an overhead door, uh, if it goes up and over into the horizontal position, can be problematic for accessing that. So, yeah, really, the the fourfold door kind of checks all those boxes. So, good. You know, we're seeing and we're hearing more natural disasters and increasingly devastating. How do the fourfold doors hold up to hurricanes, earthquakes, maybe yeah, so floods, even? Yeah, well, for obviously for for hurricanes and, and earthquakes, uh, uh, the doors are are hurricane rated, actually tested for up to level E, which is one of the higher uh, impact ratings. Um, and yeah, in, in Florida, uh, a lot of doors coastal, so um, definitely take into account uh, the finish of the door and make sure it's durable for uh, that salt water uh, and humid environment. Mm. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, earthquakes, uh, seismic loads, the doors, uh, we do a lot of doors in California. Um, and what we're seeing in California is they require not only the seismic loads, but um, uh, what they call story drift, where the building can actually, the openings can skew, uh, which can cause a door to be, be wedged in the opening and not, not operable. So we can take that into account and design the doors to allow for that, uh, for that movement of the building. So, and then other extremely harsh environments, uh, we've, we've had the doors uh, tested for, for blast loads. Uh, we've done doors at um, uh, uh, oil refineries, uh -huh. um, emergency response facilities. So if there were, obviously if there's an accident there and uh, they need that building to be hardened and, and survive, so. And and what about security? Um, unfortunately, you know, we're seeing some pretty strange things happening across the U.S. with um, unrest. Is, is, there an op is there an option for additional security or, or are they, they secure, they don't need it? 
Yeah, so when the doors are closed, everything automatically locks. Um, so yeah, one of the, the uh, other markets that we serve with this door system is, is uh, jails, prisons, federal prisons. Uh -huh. uh, they call them a sally port door where they bring, the, bring uh, prisoners in and out of the facility. So um, yeah, really by nature, just the overall construction of the door right. uh, makes it very secure. Good. What is the process if an architect or a fire department, you know, approaches door engineering and how do you, what's the process for specking a door for their station? Yeah, well, we love, we love for them to call us directly and, and uh, we have, uh, we have reps throughout the U.S. We have internal salespeople to help them. Uh, specs and drawings are available online, um, but yeah, we like, uh, we enjoy helping people directly. Obviously, there's a lot of options for window layouts and different controls uh, to really customize it to meet, meet the client's needs. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kevin, was there one project in particular that you found most interesting or most challenging? Ooh, probably not just one. I might give you two um, in, the, in the kind of different industries we serve. Um, but yeah, actually the in terms of the seismic requirements, we did uh, San Francisco Public Safety um, and that building, it was engineered so that the exterior shell of the building and the interior internal uh, columns and structure somehow moved independently. So the architect and engineers approached us and um, we had to figure out how to tie our door system to the interior uh, columns and structure and have it move independently of the exterior shell of the building. So a uh, lot of really interesting engineering that went on with that. And then on top of that, they um, we put uh, Kevlar lining within the door panels for bullet resistance. Um, so the, in terms of the fire stations, that was kind of one of the more unique stations. Uh, we also deal with a lot of really cool aviation projects. So we, were, um, we, we got to be part of uh, uh, Spaceport America in New Mexico. Uh -huh. And it's a, a curved hangar door. It's clad with uh, what they call core 10. It's a pre-weathered steel, just really unique looking building. But uh, the building houses uh, Spaceship One. So, <laughs> so that was, uh, it was a pretty, pretty unique and, and neat project to be, be part of. That's great. What's the best way for, for our viewers to get in touch with door engineering? So yeah, like I said, uh, give us a call. Um, you can find our information, uh, doorengineering.com, um, or to learn to learn more about the product. I mean, we can definitely we can put customers in touch with other fire chiefs and facilities that locally that have our doors. It's uh, it's the best way to learn about the doors is see them see them in 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 operation and and uh, and really understand what uh, what the customers uh, the benefits they see in the doors and and how they use them. Kevin, thank you for your time and thank you for watching Firehouse Quick Chats.